What's going on, everybody? Hello, hello. <laughs> I almost forgot I was saying hello to everyone and opening this whole thing up. That's all right. Well, welcome it's, to the uh, Old Women Podcast. It's us. It's us. My name is Meryl, and I'm here with uh, Maria. Hi. It, we're here today. We're and ready to go. I don't know about that. Well, I. we'll see. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. We it's, got a couple things. At the point of you hearing this recording when we recorded this episode, uh, just lots of stuff going on. Lots yeah. of heavy stuff, lots of family stuff uh, going on in the personal lives of everyone involved in this podcast. So, uh, yeah. Old I think thoughts are a little, little all difficult. over. A little I, um, all over the place. And in, in that, I was talking to Susan, Byron's wife, today because we work at the same job. And I was like, um, you work for the same company or company. The same job. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. What's that about? That's not what I meant. But, um, I was like, I think I've cried for, I don't know how many hours today just cause my hormones are all over. Oh, well, um, that too. And that I had, is always going, that's to be always an going to be an affliction. But, um, I got my, uh, little shot today. So hopefully that'll. Yeah. I don't think you disclose with people. I probably your not. Thing. So no, well, she got an injection. Today. I got an injection today. Not in my face, in my arm. Um, but yeah, so hopefully. Okay. Hopefully that rounds that out too. All right. All right. Well, uh, moving along. <laughs> Onward. Today, we're going to talk about a familiar topic. And in fact, we actually spoke about this early on in season one. Um, we're going to talk about insecurity. <sighs> but... Back in season one, when you listen to that episode, uh, it's titled Emotional Insecurity. And that was basically like how it pertains to, I think for the most part, it would, was romantic relationships. Yeah. I've had so much crap going on uh, in my personal life that I didn't get an opportunity to like re-listen to the episode before we talked about this one. So, <laughs> yay, I, good but, job. <laughs> but I also think that enough time has passed that we have some different views. That's for sure. On and it that we, even if we might repeat similar situations, I think we might be starting to look at them a little different. That was actually something I was talking about with my uh, friend and hairstylist today. What? Because I got my hair done. And, it looks um, great. My friend Jamie, who works at Soper Salon, she's super great. So if you don't have a hairstylist, um, you should go to her. Go to her. She's in, she goes. She does mine too. She's yeah. incredible. Uh, but anyway, I was talking to her about, um, she was like, oh, are you still liking like doing the recording of the podcast and things like that? Um, she's like, I love listening to it because she has a bit of a commute to work and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, and I go, yeah, I'm, I'm still really loving it. You know, sometimes I wonder if we're ever going to run out of topics, but then I we think of more things and then there's also stuff that we revisit, you know, and we were just talking about how like, mm -hmm. you know, you can revisit things because you're just at a different place in life and you can look at, you know, scripture differently and whatever the topic is differently, yeah. just depending on, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Sheesh. So I know right now, just even thinking about the topic, I was like, Oh, I have some different thoughts on it. Yeah. Period. I, and I definitely had some, like I have a, bunch of quotes in here yeah and i think this came from this might have come from uh just other research that i was doing mm -hmm. or it possibly came from our women's group when this was when we were doing this when we were doing this in church gotcha. we were doing bold women in church um before we get into some of these quotes and questions though yeah i would just like to let everybody know you can follow us on social media oh yeah yeah uh, on instagram we're there uh facebook not facebook youtube um, TikTok, all the funs, the tubes, uh, of the you. tubes. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> came out a little different <laughs> than it did in my head. <laughs> That's okay, but we're there. Uh, we're but uh, Instagram's kind of our biggest one, so follow us on there. Onward, yeah, yeah. onward with the topic today. Um, so. We'll just, you know, I like to define words. We'll just yeah. kind of glaze over that first. Okay. Um, insecurity is defined as um, uncertainty or anxiety about oneself or lack of confidence. And um, the second, like, sub-definition of it would be the state of being open to danger or threat, lack of protection, which was, you know, we kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't really talk about it because we clarified that we weren't going to be talking about that type of insecurity where, you know, right. like food insecurity and things like that. Um, right. This is more just uh, for self-reflection yeah. and being introspective. Well, right away, I'm like 
man, the, I catch myself flipping into insecurity the second I feel like, um, not uncertainty about myself, but uncertainty about the situations or like, okay. So, okay. Hold on before you keep going. That would sound like you're starting to answer one of the questions that we've got. Then I'm going to hold. Do you tend to be confident or doubt or doubt yourself? (sighs) Well, Jimmy, just go ahead with that one. Proceed. Okay. I tend to be. I can I say both? Yeah, because I feel like there's some things I'm super confident in. I don't have to like two qualms yes. or anything like that. And I think that's everybody. Yeah, I think that's but everybody. But what do you what do you tend to lean toward? I tend to probably lean a little bit more towards insecure from the aspect of, and I think it's all rooted in like that perfectionism, which. I like for those of you who have been listening for a while, you know that that's something that I'm working through because it's this aspect of, I think I crave certainty because when I'm certain it's that like, then oh, you can, then you can be confident. Then I can be confident then or you then, can be sure. Then I can be sure. Then I know that X, Y, Z is right. Then I know that this is in its proper place, which it requires <laughs> zero faith. Um, <laughs> the sub question after that is how has that tendency influenced your decision making? <laughs> Well, um, you see me freeze a lot, which has some benefits, right? Like you don't necessarily just rush into things, but at the same time, it also has, um, it can be paralyzing too. So I think sometimes I tend to flip more into the paralyzing aspect of it, um, versus the walking by faith. And, um, so I remember I was having a conversation with my pastor's wife back home and I told her, I was like, I really, I really love certainty and knowing hundred percent. And she just looked at me and she said, Maria, well, isn't our walk a walk of faith? And I was like, mm, yeah. And then she just smiled kind of like, you don't necessarily, you get my certainty is in, is in faith, not necessarily what's happening. But, um, she was like, yeah, she goes, they don't quite go hand in hand Maria. Like faith is requires us not to know everything. So, yeah, that's true. But um, I would say sometimes I tend to I tend to lean more towards that. And from the aspect of I know you said like the second um, definition is a state of being open to danger or threat, lack of protection. I've noticed more and I talked to you about this where I really had a struggle moment. Um, This was probably last summer when we were we were going to five guys. I don't know why I remember weird details, but I remember I was praying and I was like, God, I guys is good. Five guys is great. They can sponsor us if they want. Yeah, I. Yes. Get that double cheese. Yeah. With some bacon. Ooh, and then I'd get like the cooked Split onions on it too. Of regular fries. Let's go. My only qualms with Five Guys is they don't have ranch. If you wanted to dip your fries in ranch. They only have I ketchup. Mean, what a very Midwestern thing to say. It is. All right, moving um, on. Moving on. But um, I remember I was praying and I was just like, God, sometimes I feel like you didn't protect me in my divorce. And so... Um, and then so it was like, it makes me really, it makes it really hard for me to like step out in faith if I feel like that's going to happen again in fill in the blank situations of like what other situations in life won't you protect me in? Um, because so that was something that like really hit me and I was just like, I'm sorry, like I know that's the incorrect view, but I tend to, when I get really insecure is when I feel like I'm not safe in that, um, quote unquote something bad would happen um and so that was something that I even to this day like I still kind of wrestle with God with but I mean I've come a long way but that was I mean that was like a heart-to-heart conversation I had and then when we were at five guys you're like oh my gosh Maria like I was just praying like that for you that you would and it was just like the same day and it was just like a really cool moment because I was like oh gosh like for some reason I believe that God didn't keep me safe like by marrying him but um because I really did feel like I don't know, like I was going to marry him. Like I didn't, whatnot. And so I just, I wrestled with that for a long time. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, sometimes I get a little confused when, and I think it's just a a lack of, uh, like you're searching for the words. Yeah, I am. You're saying whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what's the whatnot? What's the whatnot? Well, I think one of the things I wrestled with, uh, um, and maybe this will help make it clear, is that, okay, Lord, I loved you. I sought after you. I sought you in it. Why mm-hmm. would it happen if like I was seeking you and he was seeking you? Yeah. And like it still ended that way. Yeah. Um, 
And so that was a, uh, and one of those like, God, I've served you my whole life. Like I never want a divorce to be a part of my story. Um, I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody does. Um, I like, I wanted to choose well, I wanted to choose right. I wanted to make sure this was like the right person. And now mm-hmm. it feels like all those things that I long for, like I did wrong. Yeah. Um, and so that's where, um, I think that some of that root is, is that like I did wrong. And cause I, I can honestly say like some of the taking leaps of faith ha- like were always easy for me until after my divorce where it's that like, Oh, I thought I was doing something right. And then it bl- like crazy blew up. And then it's that what else is going to happen? That's similar where you think you're doing right. And then it, do you think that you up. still feel that way? Yes and no. I think I've gotten through a lot of it. I think what makes it hard is when you have people um, who, like, have said things along the way Mm -hmm. that um, make it feel like you missed something or you, like, you didn't. And it's like, oh, well, hindsight, I did what I knew in that moment. Right. So, but it's that, like, I think it flares up when you listen to the voices of others, I guess, if that's a way to put it. Yeah. And I just want to, like, I just want to challenge that way of thinking if that's okay. No, go ahead. Um, because I'm thinking about how easily it was for the enemy to get you to focus on that Mm -hmm. rather than going. Cause because you were emotionally, you know, I mean, you felt like God wasn't protecting you at that time, right? Yeah. Um, but that was, you know, obviously something that the enemy would have you be thinking about. Right. And taking your eyes off of all of the things that God did have his hand on in your life. That's very true. You know, you didn't have children with this person, so right. you're not tethered with tethered to him. Yeah. You know, you uh, were protect, protected uh, physically yeah. uh, from this situation. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, true. there's, there's certain areas, I mean, I, and I don't know every single detail and stuff, but I think that if you were to look back and start scanning over things about like, okay, well, where was God really, where, where mm-hmm. was he? Cause he was there. Yeah. Even you were focused on one part though. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I'm trying yeah. to get at is like, you were focused on this aspect of like, oh, this fell apart and I didn't want this to happen, but it's like, he brought you through that. Yeah. And then you said something that stuck out to me too, that was, um, you know, I was, I, I was okay with, you know, taking leaps of faith until, you know, my divorce happened and I was okay with doing that sort of thing. And it's like, yeah, cause you, and you said, you know, you were, you thought you were making moves based on what you were hearing yeah. from him and making those faith moves and things like that. And it's like, yeah, you were, but two things can be true at the same time, right? Because you can, you can be making those moves of faith. And God still allowed that stuff to happen. That stuff still took place. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that his hand was, you know, like off your life, that you weren't still safe, that he didn't still have you, that he didn't have better yeah. for you in mind, that he didn't have your best, yeah. you know, in mind. And and you and I have talked about this a lot too. Um, and we've kind of, you know, talked about it um, through other episodes. And this is, the case was very true for me as well, mm-hmm. um, where I have said, you know, my divorce like unearthed a lot of things that I didn't realize needed healing in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't think that if I hadn't gone through all of that, I would not have been properly exposed to those things that needed healing and that needed my, that needed attention and that I needed to turn away from and, um, you know, repent from even, Mm -hmm. you know, because that has that whole thing just like opened up a giant hole that was like, yeah. oh, here comes everything that's really <laughs> going on underneath the surface. Right. You know, that's so good. Because I've been so busy my entire life piling everything on top of that because thinking that I and so the difference between Maria and I in our situations is like my path and the way that things happened in my divorce were in in my opinion, yes, it happened to me. Yes, 
there was infidelity that was completely out of my control. Things I didn't know were going on were going on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We're not talking about that. We're talking about my role in uh, my life Mm -hmm. (laughs) and what was happening. And I did every single thing that I wanted to do that I thought was great. Didn't bother including God in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's still the same. It's like, I didn't bother. I didn't even bother asking him about stuff and things still fell apart, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's interesting. It's just an interesting contrast that we have. Um, But I say all that to say, you know, I made a lot of those decisions and like it still happened and you made those decisions in faith and it still happened. Mm -hmm. But look at where we're at now, you know? Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff that I know that I, I need to be working on and there's things that I'm still struggling with. There's, you know, stuff you're obviously still struggling with too and things, but I would do it all over again. I would just hopefully speed up the timeline a little bit. (laughs) So it didn't take a freaking over a decade. Oh gosh. Well, and I think the thing that like you're saying and that what I wrestle with is, um, that piece of, I'm trying to figure out how to word it, but I think why I crave sec- like that certainty is because it's like, um, if I'm certain, it's more like a pre- defensive, protective thing. Yeah. Like if I'm certain, then okay. Yeah. Then it uh, then all things will be work out great. Yeah. If I if I do what's what I know is certain, then everything's going to work out fine. Yeah. Because I, it's like I. Yeah. And let me tell you that you're normal for that yeah. because you're you're literally talking to somebody right now. Yeah. L- me. Um, that has, that has thought the same thing. Yeah. Everyone wants to be sure. Everyone wants certainty, yeah. but we're not going to get it all yeah. the time. And, and, you know, sometimes it feels like when we don't get it, when we think that we need it the most and that kind of feels like a smack in the face, Yeah. but you know, I don't know. It's kind of like, I, I often think about, okay, well, if this scenario would have played out a little differently. Would I have been so, would I have grasped what it was that I needed to grasp, Mm -hmm. you know, because he knows us better than we know ourselves, right? Right. And so we go through things, not because he wants to hurt us, but because he wants us to be more like him and, and to be who he created us to be. Mm -hmm. And so therefore it's like things have to hit us a certain way in order for that impact, in order for that revelation, in order for us to like realize, oh, yeah, I really needed you, and I really need you in this moment. I can't do this by myself, yeah. or, um, you know, everything that I thought. Yeah, you know, I think I just thought of a word, way to word out what it was too. I said I think one of the things that I still struggle with is this idea of, well, if I would have done it right or got it right, then he wouldn't have had to like rescue me from the situation. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you could think you know that, what I mean? but that's I'm saying, still like just, that's a, that's yeah. a thought that I struggle with. Yeah. That of like, oh, well, cool. You must have just tanked that because look, look what God had to do to get you out and keep you. Yeah, which and is I would also challenge a, you again to just say like, that's that's just the enemy saying that. Yeah, yeah you you're know. right. You're right. What if? Yeah. Uh-huh. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Guys, it has been an emotional ah. day. So it's I'm been, already. It's been a day. Um, I would like to read a little bit from a devotional that I had please, go on. done. Um. Oh, Byron's got tissues, not the toilet paper roll that we had to have yes, delivered. Finally got those. Thank you, Byron. Can I just okay. set them on the middle of the table? It's um, from the devotional I did in the Bible app called Insecurity, The Lies and the Truth of It. And so it's just a couple paragraphs, but it was something that stuck out to me as I was doing this devotional. And it says, um, when we allow God to define us, then we allow God to guide us. And then we can do big things for the kingdom, kingdom of Christ. God wants to use us as a vessel, but when we focus on what we aren't, we leave less room for others to focus on who God is. Eve heard the lie of Satan. She started to believe his lie was truth. She obeyed the lie, and all of a sudden, her relationships with Adam and God were changed forever. Mm -hmm. She believed the words from the enemy that she wasn't enough, that she needed more, that her life wasn't full, that she wasn't content. My gosh, how many times, Sheesh. how much do all of us think that? Right. I'm like raising my hand. Yeah. That is a, that is a generational curse that has started from, from those two mm-hmm. and has carried you know, on I down I never even thought about that. Like that the generations. Through. I mean, that's good. Um, 
not great, but yeah, it's you know what I'm saying. You see, it's good to connect the dots. Yeah, I like to be able to do that. We all, I mean, you, I know you do too. Um, and then it goes on to say, you see, sometimes we believe a lie because it comes from someone we very close to, whom we love or whom we trust. And most times, we can justify the lie into becoming truth, right? Instead of questioning its validity or going to God and asking for confirmation, we just accept it and the lie becomes our identity. Sheesh, that part hit my back. Ah. Well, I'm just going to make it even more emotional. Okay, so yeah. I'll carry on with something else. <laughs> no, uh, it's good. Because <laughs> I think that's like the hard part where it's like, oh, I should lean on. Because what I wrestle with too is like when scripture says like, let me lean on like wisdom and lean on those. Because to me, it's like those that close should give me wisdom. Yeah. And so like when sometimes when things are said where you're like, uh, like giving it its yeah. place. Like, what is that? Is that, yeah. where is it? Where's the root of that coming from yeah. within that? I mean, I, I will say I'm in like the in between in terms of whether I tend to be confident or doubt myself. Mm -hmm. I think I am now a way more confident person than I was, you know, even a year ago, probably yeah. a year ago was a lot less, but like, I would say uh, it doesn't come from my divorce. I think it was just amplified yeah. throughout my relationship and marriage and divorce and everything. I think that was just only made a lot bigger of a problem. And that's probably why I was in the situation that I found myself in um, as well. But like something that I, that I've thought about is um, that tendency to have doubted myself and a lot of times, like, the things that, that I have found I get insecure about has really been shallow. It's been mm. pretty shallow. Um, I'm very, I have been very insecure about my physical looks. Mm -hmm. And um, that has also been challenged with, um, you know, like, dating now that I'm single or now that I'm single again or whatever. Um, and, like, dating and I'll a lot of times, I mean, I've been on a lot of dates with like younger guys and mm -hmm. I'm dating a younger guy now. And he and I were just having this conversation not too long ago. I was mm -hmm. like, if you want to know something I'm like really worried about, I, I'm not kidding. Like, I mean, you think that things are like fine now, but like, say we get married and we get 15, 20 years down the road, like I'm going to look a yeah. lot different to you. And like, this is going to work out from my favor, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's been my prayer that, yeah. uh, my husband, only finds me more attractive as I age and but and I, I I get so irritated I get very frustrated with myself but I think that you know just speaking to any woman they can relate to it yeah. because it's just like you know there's so much value placed on looking yeah. youthful and and or I think even the fluctuation as my body fluctuates like yeah what are they going to look at like after I have a kid and my body's not going to be exactly the same. What are the, right. you know, like some of those too, that's right. Just fed. Right. To us as well. Yeah. And like something that I had said to him was just like, you know, I, I would be lying if I didn't tell you that I didn't feel, you know, like, like I'm worried that I'm not going to be enough for you. Like, I feel like I'm not going to be attractive enough for you at some point. You're mm -hmm. going to like lose interest and go find somebody else. Cause I wasn't even enough for my ex. And like, and he, in terms of just being, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I was just, I didn't feel like I was even enough for him mm -hmm. because of, because of the infidelity, because of all of that. I was like, cool. I'm not even, I'm not even enough for this guy. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, what is honestly making me think that I'm going to be enough for, for this person who is also younger than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and has this person who has like far better qualities far and far better. like, yeah, this person's like a, you know, like just so he's greater than or. Yes, yes, yes. He is equal in God's eyes. Yeah, and he loves both of them. Loves both of them, much. but for you, yeah, um, better suited. Better suited. Um, I would say more mature. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you know, yeah. I th and 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 that's I I struggle with that because I'm like, gosh, Meryl, really? It's like mm -hmm. that's you're just gonna focus on your physical looks so much. But I didn't realize like how much I think about that, like yeah. how much I'm changing. And, you know, I, I've said this before, you know, probably in conversation to you. And then I think I, I said it the other day to somebody. I was like, you know, oh, I said it to my grandpa. Um, I, I go because he had uh, he had fallen and he goes, you know, 
something I realized is that like my my mind tells me I can do whatever I want to do. But then my body reminds me I'm 94 years old. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, isn't that wild? Like one second you're the younger person in your group of friends and like you have all these older friends or you're mm-hmm. just the youngest person in the room or something like that. Or you're the youngest person at your job, whatever. And then all of a sudden the next thing you know, you're the older person. Mm-hmm. You're like the, yeah, you're the dad mm, of the group kind of thing. Cool, wise or more yeah. mature. <laughs> like, what if person. I don't want to be that one? I don't want to be that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's so, it's so wild because, you know, sometimes there are days where like life is just insufferable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you've struggled with any type of, if anybody has, you know, struggled with any type of like mental health issues, things like that, or, you yeah. know, you go through seasons where just life is just kicking you in the face and, um, you know, you're like, gosh, this is, this life sucks. It's so long and it's miserable. But then there are other moments where you're like, no, it really is. It really is just like a flash. We are here. Yeah. So shortly. But anyway. um, Yeah. And and so I've learned, you know, and I'm sort of and I'm sort of more leaning toward being a person that is more confident because Mm -hmm. as I am digging into God's word every day and I have changed my circle of influence uh, to be people who are pushing me toward Christ and pushing mm-hmm. me in my relationship and challenging me and holding me accountable and things like that. Um, that has helped build my confidence because, you know, they re like being in godly community, having a circle of influence mm-hmm. of people that are, that are either just as spiritually mature or maybe more spiritually mature. You've got kind of a variation there. I think is always good. Yeah. Um, just for different perspectives, but it's like that, you know, can make all can make all the difference and um and 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 just reinforces what god says about about me Mm -hmm. and and what he says about all of us you know and how he how he loves us and how he you know i mean he makes so many promises in there so anyway yeah i just have to say like that it it is i find myself being more confident because that's awesome i am just reinforcing that through relationship with with godly community and, and through, uh, spending time in the word. Yeah. So that's awesome. I love that. What do you think as a whole, the root of insecurity is? What'd you say? Ooh. The root man. I, I don't know. Honestly, Mm -hmm. I think it might be different for everyone Mm -hmm. because I think a lot of it, um, has to do with, uh, your upbringing, what's been modeled for you. Um, you know, we've got, we've got another, part. we've got another episode. I don't know which, which order, if this one's going to come before it or after, but another episode on, you know, breaking generational bonds. And mm-hmm. I think that has a huge impact on, mm-hmm. on, you know, how we're, sec- how we're secure and in, in ourselves and, yeah. and you know, what, if you're not, I mean, it's very, it's very important <laughs> how you're raised. Yeah. That's I mean, a huge factor. It's duh, Meryl stating the obvious, but like sometimes the obvious doesn't feel so obvious. Yeah, I mean you are you are what you see. Mm-hmm. You always you starts out that way until you know you have a revela- re- a, a, a revelation of you know who God is if you didn't know him before. But like yeah, your upbringing has a lot to do with it. I think yeah, I think there's a piece too that's like our, especially our culture so inward focused. Yeah, that um, it's hard not to be. It's times. hard not to be at times, but that it's also. Um, I, w- I okay. I want to say it this way. Like I sometimes I think like the root, like pride, is in the root, and I'm not necessarily talking about like I'm so great kind of pride. It's that where did I hear somebody say this once, and it always stuck with me that pride is not thinking too highly of yourself. It's thinking of yourself too often. Yeah, like whether that be I'm the worst. No one loves me. I'm like that is even within pride because it's like such an inward turn of everything revolves around me. Um, And so sometimes I think when we get incredibly insecure that we like forget that there are other people and that other people have lives and feelings and emotions and like their thoughts and everything aren't necessarily on us. And so we just get, I think it just gets off balance. Um, I think that's a little bit of it too. Not mm-hmm. everything, but I think that can be there. Yeah. Um, 
But what is, okay, how can you tell within yourself that, ooh, I'm starting to, like, tap into insecurity? You know, like, is there, like, a little signal that you have where it's like, oops, okay, I can tell I'm, like, I'm striving right here. I'm not, I'm not walking the most confident. Yeah, it's called the Holy Spirit. (laughs) He's pretty great at that. It's really important. I really feel sore, very, very sore. I'm sore about it, but also I feel very sorry. That's what I meant to say. I'm very sorry for people who uh, don't have a relationship with the Lord, who do not have the Holy Spirit or the homey spirit, as we say here on this podcast. I said it first. You did. I said it before we started recording, so just now it's on record. Okay. So and I will say, it, I have for me. heard Meryl say it prior to anything. Like, you were the first person I ever heard say <laughs> that. So, <laughs> but I mean, okay. So, anyway, just trying to, yeah. But I think it's a huge piece. But yeah, I, I feel terrible for people that don't have a relationship with him because once you ask the Lord to be ruler over your life, he sends a friend. Yeah. He sends a confidant and he sends an accountability check. Most people in the world would call that your uh, gut or your mm-hmm. intuition or whatever. Um, but for those of us who follow Christ, that is that is the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Because that's, I think those are the only times that, I mean, I don't know that I would really recognize mm-hmm. it. And I think I would carry on being a terrible mm-hmm. person, a shell of myself, mm-hmm. if I didn't. I think it's like to add on to that, like he alerts when it's, I think that for yeah. me, a big thing is like when I'm spiraling, I can tell like, oh, I'm not thinking on good things or I'm now starting to hit the spot where I feel like I have to strive and make and control and all these things. And he's the one that's like, hey, now, um, right. Like he's the one that like alerts, you know, we have been doing this for like 10 minutes. Is that, is that helping you out any, you know, like without yeah. having that, like sheesh. So grateful for that. Yeah, I, let me see, let me see one of these other questions. I don't know that I have much more to say about that. Yeah, Um, I think some of these quotes would also be great too. What do we got here? Well, I did the one from Insecurity. We got some scripture. There's one quote from Brene Brown. From Brene Brown, which I appreciate. Brene Brown has a great book um, and it's, oh my gosh, I can picture the cover and it's talking about like how embracing imperfection and I've read it once and I'm on my way through it again, but it's even on the book cover, it has like the, one of the letters is crooked, um, in the word imperfection That's so annoying. and, but she did it on purpose. Of course she did. And, um, I think it's called like, um, embracing imperfection or something like that. But the quote from her says, vulnerability is not weakness. It's our most accurate measure of courage. And I think that's really cool. Oh, yeah, the gifts of imperfection is what it's called. And she was doing this talk I was listening to, and um, she was talking about, she was in a room full of people, and she had everyone raise their hand. She said, well, anybody in this room who thinks that showing vulnerability is actually showing weakness, raise your hand. And she said every single hand in the room went up. Like every single person thought, hey, when I'm vulnerable and I show my weakness and I'm like my insecurities, all those things. Like I'm being very, very weak. And everybody raised their hands and she said, all right. And then she had everybody put their hands down. She said, now how many times when someone is vulnerable with you and they show you their insecurities and they show you their weakness, do you think it's actually them being really, really brave and full of courage? And every single person in the room raised their hand. And so it was like, she was doing it as this example, as like we as individuals view and think that our insecurities make us weak, but it's actually not how people view it at all. My hand just hit the mic thing. <laughs> That's good. So I just thought that was a great perspective. And and she spent her whole time studying. She was trying to prove, she set out to prove that we don't need um, vulnerability and connection in life. And she's a researcher and she ended up, um, all of her research pr- pointed to, you have to have vulnerability to, to live a, full, a fulfilled life. Yeah. So she said that um, she was frustrated that she's like, I'm a researcher gone wrong. Basically, she set out with her yeah. her thesis and everything proved opposite of it. And now she she travels all over the world and talks on it. And she's, I, I don't know, I, I could listen to her all day. I think she's brilliant. You do bring up a lot of Brene Brown. I quotes. do bring up a lot of Brene Brown. Um, in Joshua, 
Yeah, let's go to the Bible. Joshua 2, 12 through 16. This is the story of Rahab. Ooh. Um, now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my mother and father, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and you will save us from death. She's harboring uh, Israelites? Two spies. Well, two Israelites. Two spies. spies. So basically it was two spies who were from Israel, or the Israelites who were coming in to take down Jericho. Yeah. And he says, our lives for your lives. The men assured her, if you don't tell what we're doing, we will treat you kindly, faithful, and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. So she let them down by a rope through the window for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. She said to them, go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there three days until they return and then go on your way. And then I had, I just had written a note. Um, I've written notes after each one of these scriptures, but one of them was just, you know, Rahab was a prostitute and no prostitute in the history of this world has ever held a reputation of being reliable, trustworthy, or honest. But here was Rahab. She did not allow what others thought of her or the stereotypes stereotypes attached, my gosh, to her lifestyle dictate or determine her course of action. She feared God more than the king and acted Mm. accordingly, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, whatever insecurity she did have. Because, you know, a lot of things that we do stem from insecurities. A lot of a lot of negative or self harming things stem from insecurities that we think of like how often we like self a self what's the word I'm looking for um I'm trying to read your mind um not like self implode but um, self um destruct destruct yeah like where we'll do think not self destruct I'm not even that that's not that word what I'm looking for are you talking about deprecating no like somebody you know um, I knew you were trying to say that at first but it's like a situation where it's like you know what um because I'm insecure I'm gonna go ahead and just try to like ruin the situation on my own so it doesn't have to get ruined for me and then it's like I know it's my self sabotage sabotage that's the word there I'm looking go. for yeah. well, I think we self sabotage out of insecurity a lot too oh for sure so then we got Ephesians two ten which says for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do and then my note says the enemy does his best to redirect focus and distract us from the truth about what God says about who we are may this be a good reminder of his truth which is the only truth that matters yeah bang boom whoa sheesh Meryl <laughs> I haven't opened these notes in a hot that's minute so good so that's funny I need I needed this today. So this is funny we're talking about it. First Corinthians six, nineteen through twenty says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your body and mind. Ask him to help you clear your mind of lies that you've been holding on to and allowing to define you. Hmm. Where did that wisdom come from, Meryl? Where is it? Holy Spirit? I guess. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Judges 11 through 16. Do you want that one? You want me to do that one? Uh, I'm kind of looking you at it. You want to hold off on it? Yeah, because I think that we're discussing this in another episode. Okay. So. We can hold off on that one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just think that, like, hindsight, just looking over everything we've talked about, that everybody does have insecurity, and I think... The bit, one of the questions is like, what are ways that you've been successful in overcoming it? And I think that it would be the aspect of letting God define you versus letting situations define you. And like some of these have said, like watch, like hel- asking God to help you like figure out what's a lie that you've believed. Cause mm-hmm. some of that comes from a long time. Some of that comes from when we were kids and it was something that yeah. honestly, it could have been something a teacher said. It could have been something that like people, people don't necessarily understand that their words cut the way that they do but like helping believe lies um i you guys know i refer to pastor robert morris a lot and he was talking about how he always believed he was really clumsy and for a good chunk of his life he was just like oh i'm always just really accident prone and he would say that all the time and he said he was starting to pray and ask asking god to like lord help me understand and look at lies that i've been believing and that came up that like you're accident prone he's like well i always get in accidents and God challenged him in a way of like, well, you believe you always believe that you're going to. And so he just started like rebuking and by rebuking, it means like going against that lie and speaking that like, no, God has me. His hand is on me. I'm safe. I am protected. I'm not prone to accidents. And night and day, he stopped having all these random like 
random little accidents. But he's like, I believe that because that was something that was spoken over me so many times when I was a child that, so it can be, it doesn't have to be like your X, Y, Z. It can be little things that the enemy tries to like, come oh, I'm in. I'm such a klutz. I'm such a klutz or just the ways that he tries to get you to think that you're less than. Yeah. Yeah. Or like something's wrong with you or something is not right or. Yeah. You're too, you're too much. You're too emotional. Where'd that come from? Who said, who said, who said that? that to you? Um, that was, isn't that what God said to Adam? Oh, oh he was he like, goes, who he was told like, you you're naked? Yeah. Who told you you're naked? Yeah. Mm. Who told you? Who told you that? Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah. Sheesh. I don't yeah. that thought just kind of like. Yeah. Do you have any other thoughts? No, I don't have any other okay. thoughts. I don't have any other thoughts today too. Well, I'm dang. sure we'll hit insecurity multiple times because it's such. It's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. It's woven through so much, but um, hopefully this, maybe you just feel like you relate to some, some of us. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you liked it, but we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next week. I don't have anything else. Yeah, I don't really either. Okay. So just be safe, make good decisions and, uh, see ya. All right. Bye.